Hello everyone, so today we will do a map painting for a set extension and this is our plate here this is our original footage original footage and uh, just going to mark it with a grey colour for now so first thing we want to do is to uh, put everything in the right perspective and set the vanishing point I'll just go to my shape here and select my perspective vanishing point file and I'll start to create the grid on this thing. what we want to do is to kind of uh, adjust all the points so that it's totally sitting on all the perspective lines for example I'm checking the uh, just nudging it left and right to get the sheet line exactly correct so so I get this line by fol making these lines follow the uh, curve and the lines on it so try to be as accurate as you can so that we can set the perspective file correctly and uh, now I'm just doing the horizon line it looks easy, but uh, sometimes it will take a while to find the right spot so it can be as accurate as possible. And once you're done, you might want to just oops, what did I press? Once you're done, you might want to just uh, double check with some other areas in the picture as well. And sometimes it's just because some of the buildings is not totally straight. But a lot of times it's more or less relatively accurate in terms of the linear perspective alright so I also want to make sure that uh, I can select all my points I can put the pivot okay my pivot is actually alright I want to set my these uh, lines to go out of the surface area onto the canvas so that I can create the lines all over okay so now this layer is uh, just a path, you know. So this is just a path, and uh, it's not being written on any layers yet. So I'm just gonna create a layer. I'll call this perspective lines. Actually, I'll create a group and call this perspective. Set it to red color, why not? Put my colors to red color. While doing that, I'm also going to go to my brush and uh, make sure my brush is uh, at a very small brush right now. Because the next thing I'll do is I'll go out here and right click and I'll do a stroke path. Set it to pressure and uh, using the brush and I should create the lines using uh, strokes of brush strokes all over on this particular layer. So now even if I unselect the path, I have it on a single layer here. So this is my perspective lines that I've created. Okay, next thing, just want to check the another layer for VP, which is the exact vanishing point. So I think this will be useful for me to just be able to transform my shapes based on the center of the point because my the red one I have is pretty uh, big so it, it might not be very accurate so I'm just gonna do a test now to see if, if I get it, get it right at the center I think it's, it's not too bad it's pretty close to the right at the center so I'm fine with that next up I can think of uh, doing a sky replacement as the first thing I'll do. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my list of stock images. I have a lot of stock images. If you go to my uh, textures, you'll see that I have lots and lots of images. So all these images, I can from all these images, I can just pull out any stock images for me to use. 
anyway so this will be handy for you so start collecting your own library I'm just gonna pick this one right now I'll get a photo select it and I'll paste it in okay this folder I'm just gonna group it up put it to blue color gonna switch off my green screen don't need it anymore and I'll call this group as a sky replacement alright so for the sky maybe you can put it to smart object so that uh, I will be able to resize it up later if I want to and uh, don't need to worry about it being changed in its resolution and, uh, Take note of the vanishing point, which is kind of where the horizon should be, so it should be roughly accurate to that. And I also want to make sure that my sky looks kind of pretty in this instance. So maybe somewhere here. You know. Quite nice around here. Not too bad for now. This is a placeholder. Maybe I can add some more clouds on this direction later. Actually, let me see if I can do that now. I'll just I think this area is just for this section of crowds here. I think that would be nice. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting is I'm aiming at this left corner. Is it good? Mm. Sometimes you don't know it until you try. Let's go to try and see what it get. Not too bad, you know? Okay, next uh thing I like to do very often is to just use the original footage and to extend it further out towards the vanishing point so you should change the color of my vanishing point so I'll change this to okay this is like a yellow color so it's pretty obvious okay so I'm gonna create another folder I call it extension set extension one and for this one I'm using the original footage, which is these two streets here. This street and this street, this street, and I'm, I'm just pulling it back towards this perspective line, this vanishing point here. Because uh, that will give us a good guide of how the street is going to look like, as well as um, looking at how the image will be formed right at the end, and uh, how the colors will look with some similar buildings like this. It's also the most invisible one, I think. So, see, I put the uh, I press alternate, and I left click on that location there. So, what happened is that let me do that again. This is on free transform, and then uh, to set a pivot here, set a pivot here. I have to press alternate, and just left click right at the spot. Okay and I can just set a pivot here and I think it's, it's quite a successful set extension for now it's simple but uh, it's ef effective and that's what you want to get from map painting so you need to find good solutions so what is good now is this kind of streets here it also give us some ideas of how it's gonna look with a street going this direction, kind of like that. Like <coughs> I can create another one, go to this layer below, and I'm just gonna extend it one more time. And you can see that the style is very similar. We don't have to worry about this uh, extension being of a different style of buildings from the ones in front because, well, it's already, uh, see the styles are very similar, so because they are obviously similar buildings. And uh, as a base, this is good for me, and uh, I believe that I can manipulate it and modify it in another way, such that it will not look so similar later on. But as a base, this is pretty successful. Okay, so the uh, orange vanishing point, I'm gonna name it as vanishing point orange as well. Perspective. Okay, nope. 
got it really wrongly. Orange. Okay. Look at this. Yep, the perspective is lining up pretty well. Not bad. Okay. So what you want to do when you work in Visual Effects Studios or other studios out there is you always always want to get a first pass ready and be able to show your supervisors your progress of how things are right at the beginning. So even if it's just half a day's work or a few hours work, so it's always good to have this kind of progress on it and have a base layer out so that everyone can see. Okay. Next, I'm just gonna grab some of these photos I found before that I already think is pretty successful. So, so the style of the buildings is European. It's something very similar to what we have as the foreground or original footage. And uh, resolution wasn't that great, but we'll see how it helps. Okay, so for now it seems okay, all right. Okay, I'm just gonna group it up. Okay, call it sex extension two. Just isolate this layer for now. I alternate click on here. Later, I'm gonna alt click there again to just se select the rest of the areas back up. But for now, I'm trying to do a s sky mask and uh, gonna on my continuous so that I don't have to do extra work over here. It looks like I do have to do a bit of extra masking, which is fine. Can't uh, really be too clean just using the magic wand. You kind of always have to touch up a little bit more. So it's not exactly magic magic. You know. it's just gonna do some of this masking and uh, part of what you have to do as a map painter be very good at masking be very good at cleaning all these edges up and not leave uh, any traces of it being clues of the original scene uh, everything should look seamless together and that's what you want to do still need to clean up this area here and these uh, images as I've said before are all royalty free images by the way Okay, so I use the uh, creative commons website just shut it up and uh, save some of these images down <coughs> oops use the wrong masking over here actually I'm just gonna fully get rid of it Sometimes it's cleaner that you you know which part of the masking you wanna get. So it's all good. I'm gonna delete everything here, which is fine. And I'll click, bring all the layers back up. I'm gonna do something really cool here. So the original footage has all the color information that we can grab from. And it's important that we name this of the original footage because I'm gonna do a color match to the original footage. So the color is obviously different on the new element that I brought in. I'm gonna duplicate this layer already. I'm gonna go to image adjustments match color and I'm gonna just push the source image as this PSD file and uh, match to which layer match to the original footage layer. Oh, I got some it's gonna that wasn't super successful right now, but uh, it's not too bad for the first pass. Helps with a lot of color adjustments already. But let's see if I can get something better. I can also do another thing here. It's worth a try that. Uh, I do a copy and I merge all these layers down. So I have basically I merge all the layers down. 
and I'm just gonna try it and I call this match color. See if this will give us a better match of the colors of for the uh this layer over here. Okay, so this is my first try, I'm gonna do it a second try. So try number two. I'll do it image adjustments mesh color. I'll go to the mesh color layer. Mesh color. That's kinda the same, isn't it? So it's uh it is also pretty bright. Way too bright. Alright. One thing good about having these two layers is I can even if it doesn't match exactly, I can do a opacity down and you know, I can have a opacity in between. In this case maybe it's slightly too bright, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use it directly and I'll just bring my levels up. And you can already see that it's working really well and uh might need a bit more cyan, so I'm just gonna adjust a little bit more cyan in myself. And uh, as we know and learn about atmospheric perspective, and create another layer. <coughs> a lot of these buildings in the far distance is gonna be affected by the atmosphere and the color of the sky. So just go ahead and create another layer and put some of this fog down, and we can see effect of it coming on. This wasn't too bad. I'm gonna create a mask on my set extension here and I'm gonna mask this whole area up. some potential here. Yeah. Though I have to say that uh needs a lot of more work. I'm gonna alt tap on this layer and uh, just make sure that I my brushes through brushes strokes is going on top of this. It's a little bit too much. I'm gonna use my burn tool. Add a bit more of this uh went into it. Not too bad so far. Our set extension without our set extension one it looks like this. And uh later we can add more stuff in the front to cover the roads a little bit more and uh a lot of times map painting is just about finding the right images and obviously I've taken some time before to find some good images that's why it's a little bit more successful right now you know what I just want to try something S10 1 this one I'll just name it S10 2 it's good to name your layers so you always know where everything is this one is called 3 I'm just gonna bring it back in get my vanishing point at the right spot and what if I do another one? I just wanna see. So yeah, it's gonna be a problem. It's a little bit too small, isn't it? So yeah, we're we're fine before. But uh, it's definitely good to make use of some of these streets and the things on the right. So So even if I don't use the full part of this layer, I can invert this mask and then I decide which part of it that I want to use, which is some of these streets here. Just cover it up, push it up a little bit more. And uh, can't really figure out for this building right now, but a little bit of it wasn't bad. You know, you imagine all this mass covering over each other as the ways that you have to make your map painting invisible. The more mass and the more irregular your mass is, the more 
it's gonna work out for you to create a seamless map painting. Okay, I'm gonna get another file in, and uh, well, this one is under set extension two. So probably I should put this under set extension one in between these two. Just w aiming at this gap over here, and I don't know, maybe over here. At some point, I'm gonna need to do something to these two areas to make it not so regular as compared to the rest of the buildings. So that's what it's doing. So this is a new element as part of the extension one. Okay, I'm not the super most uh, organized guy, but there's always a system of how I name things. And I definitely have some system of naming. Even if you don't have time to name your layers, you should always color code your layers so you know what you're doing where to find it. Same thing, I'm gonna just do this for now. Work on a mask. W for magic wand. It's actually a pretty good mask. Quite lucky here. And get another mask here. Not bad at all. Additional manual ones with the lasso tool using L and uh, just holding shift or alternate shift as you please to add or remove mass accordingly. So it's pretty good. So I'll a little bit more, press delete and we'll get back here. Okay. So this is I uh, original color. This now I'm gonna create another one with a mesh color again. Same thing. Gonna do this really fast using the mesh color layer. A little bit bright. Gonna add the levels to it. And yeah, actually, the contrast is not that great either. Looking at the black values, you know, the black values here, and you compare the black values here. And at the same time, you might want to compare to some of the black values on the opposite side. So, try to get a balance of everything in a way. And might also need to look at my perspective line this time because. Uh, trying to use another layer here. Perspective is somewhat similar but definitely not exactly. So yep, if I were to use this element I need to uh, distort it quite a bit. I'll go ahead and do that. Oops, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah, always keep it straight where they should be and uh try to match. You can school like uh you can squash some of the photographs just a little bit. You can get away with that, but you know that if you do it too much, people is gonna notice that an animal is being squashed or stretched a lot and it's not going to be a good idea so you need to find the right balance for it you need to be very sensitive to how you do things and still alright I think let me try this a little bit more ok top part is actually looking ok wasn't too bad really might be able to use some of this right now we temporary off the perspective lines again I'm just duplicating the layer a lot of times so that I have, have different history of how I transform it and now I'm just looking at how I can use this layer for some of this and maybe I'll just put this layer some of this here only on certain areas you know like masking is really good to just review a certain area use certain area of the footage like now I can I'd rather have the road coming through here so it looks a little bit more realistic you know so things like that yeah, things like that and it's gonna be useful mm, 
not bad. Okay, this last building is definitely not working. Do another mask just for him. And uh, if you deal with this kind of trees like this, it might be good to just do a very quick mask for now. And then uh, you can use your brush strokes to deal with it later. Oh, I really screwed up here. My uh, mask jumped. So, ah, whatever. I hit that really. Let me just do it over over so that it's pretty clear what I'm doing. Nice. I'm gonna create an unknown. I don't know if I'm doing too many masks here, but sometimes that's what you have to do, double masking in first shop. It's kinda annoying, but... That's what you gotta do. Double masking. Okay, and... I just wanna keep a history of that, so I'm duplicating the layer again, and I'm flattening the layer again. I'm kinda it's just how I work. I have a lot of history and I have a lot of flattened layers as well. But I can always get back every single one of my layer. Every single one of them. So I'm gonna remove here. Doesn't really look quite right. Um I feel like the color is still really off here and this area here have a little bit more perspective going this way for sure. Just gonna push it in a little bit more. Not bad. Uh. Just gonna hmm. actually, I might have softened it too much. Let's go back and see. Transform it. Yeah, I probably soften it too much. So let me just do it again actually. I'm gonna go back with my layers. I'll draw this way. Have to use this layer again actually. Okay, I'm gonna surgically remove this area again. Just wanna make sure I don't soften any of these elements because it's quite important. So perhaps for some of this is much easier to just use a brush depending on how you do it really. It's also good to add some of these trees and with some natural lighting that's being color matched to what we have on the footage. Useful to have. Alright, there we have it. So don't be afraid to uh, go back to your element if you think that you're just gonna be more useful for you. Even though you may end up doing a little bit more work but it will be worth it in the end. So I need to be a little bit more careful about how I distort this one more time. So probably I I can only distort it once, you know, just now I did it twice, which is could be the real reason how that happened. And the 
level details is always very sensitive. Also looking at the scale of the windows, and uh, just trying to get a good match of how I think it should be. Right, pretty cool. Uh, did we get this layer again? Give it a mask again. Bring some of this back here. Make use of different elements to blend seamlessly into each other and help each other if you could uh, over the top I'm gonna add the sky colors again which will give us the atmospheric frog effect I bring everything a little bit more closer alternate tab on the layer here make sure you see this icon so this will only make the color affect this layer The shadow of this lighting wasn't the grass, so I need to add manually add shadows to the right side. We have to match the lighting. So this layer I can name it blue, and the next layer I can name it yellow. Or tap again, and I just want to add a little bit more yellow to these buildings here. I should be able to get somewhere nice with this kind of settings. There's a lot of patience involved and about finding the right image to use. If you use a good image, you might not need to do as much as this. And uh, if you find an image that is, uh, needs more work, you need to do a lot of painting to make it better. So I'm just gonna change it to color, see if that's working. Color dodge. No, color dodge is always too strong almost. But uh, it might be good to try screen. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a lot of yellow to the screen because uh, of the algorithm of the blending mode and then I'm just gonna darken this screen. So the yellow is not too bad, but I uh, just want to add some more shadows into this. Adding an another layer called dark blue. Grab some of these darker shadow areas and add a little bit more in to here. So
very very sensitive about how you use this color and how them blend together very very sensitive to them. so you can see that uh, I got a very rough um, set extension really quickly here and as I have said this is just a first pass so what you want to do now is to actually take the time here and think of the real concept. So in between these two set extension layers and between the sky as well, you can go in and add some concepts. So what I actually do is I start thinking about the maybe there's a tower here, it's bigger. The Maybe there's another building here. Just using silhouettes to help you form your shapes in your head and see where it takes you. Look from afar and uh, try to blend in, blend in these layers. Let them merge with the fog and the cloud. Try to, try to use the atmosphere fog for your advantage. So, this could be a solution. Like, uh, I can add some. Or it can be a really tall building here, you know? You never know. Depends on your concept and what you want to do. But obviously, the more you do, it's going to be more difficult. You can even add 3D stuff if you want. And, uh, let's say we just have one week to do this is uh gonna be careful how we add these kind of objects to the scene and you really need to think about what you wanna do so I'm just gonna do a quick highlight this here. Maybe not. <laughs> I feel like a uh, object here looks uh, cool for the composition. At the same time, you have to keep in mind that this will be a little bit of work. So it really depends. But for this video, I don't think I'm really gonna finish this, though. But as a concept, yes. So. What you do in the studio is, is perhaps you can talk to your supervisors, see if uh, they are keen for you to take on this concept further, uh, things like that, you know. And also, I w want you to always keep in mind that map painting is about the realistic of of the painting, and that's why I'm doing all this invisible painting as much as I can, and. Uh, It's not always that we need to replace every file. A lot of times, we just need to uh, be very smart about how we change our things and how we duplicate the existing colors and the existing scenes that we have. So a lot of times, it's about duplicating. If I were to take it further, all these three, I can group this up. And I can name this as my foreground foreground and I can actually merge this right now so if I want to go back I can go back to this layer but if I not I can just work on this foreground layer foreground flatten just call this let's call this yellow this time flatten and I'm gonna work on this layer flatten man. it's gonna help so much if you're just painting on flatten layer and you're just cloning things, you know, you're just cloning and uh, smudging all these uh, seams and lines that you have between your map painting and your set extension and your footage. So this will be the part where you really blend everything. 
and people without the really keen eye, they would not be able to tell where you started all the map painting. So obviously this line here has to go, and I would need to take it out if I want it to be really seamless map painting. All this is being duplicated. And even if I make some mistakes here, like just now I have some mistakes here, I can clone it in such a way that I almost treat it as a intentional. You know, you need to be able to use your mind and decide if you can do things like this. See, another mistake here. Do I want to keep it? Do I want to remove it? Things like that. So I'm keeping part of that line actually, after some considerations very quick considerations and remove most of it too so going back here clean it out a little bit more so this way here you might think that it's really uh, going to be obvious but uh, if I were to add a fence or something along this ledge here you know don't think there's going to be a problem with this painting if I do that so, it's all about blending different layers together and working those out to your advantage. Those on the right, I actually think it's quite successful over here, so although it looks a little bit duplicated. <coughs> what I can do is I can just go in here and I can just uh, change some things from here. So, I say this. Uh, sign will not be green here and that, that this line runs all the way top and then let's say there's a maybe there's a different block over here that I do not have you know just change things up a little bit after you duplicate it So if I were to remove things like this, I probably should go back to my original layers because it involves the element behind it, but uh, at the same time I can get away with that, so See, even if the shadows are of the same color when I duplicated them correctly, so Not going to be too much of a problem Some of these edges is just there on the element itself, so is too much of a problem. So thinking about con concepts for now. I can also just delete the concepts if I don't like it and uh, reposition it a little bit maybe. So you wanna do bring in some of these elements that I have. a very quick eraser over all these files, clean up the edges a little bit more, match the colors to the mesh color file, give it a darker shade to it, give it more contrast, I'm just gonna use this concept a little bit and uh, Let's see if I want to use any of this element. I actually feel this area would be useful, so I can just duplicate that out. Maybe try using that.
this is another way that you can put in some of these towers really quickly. And just put it there. Alright, so I hope you like this uh, short tutorial, and of course, like what I said, if you need to create more existing plates, you need to think about how you finish off these different concepts that you have. Alright, so one concept, two concept. Cool.